1176 is a fixed threshold compressor limiter. Uh, it's very famous. You'll find it in most studios across the world. Uh, it's a very unique compressor as well. It has a fixed threshold, so you're turning the input up into it and then the output after uh, compression has happened. It's very characteristic. It has a fast uh, attack and you know, it can have a fast or a slow release and it has a very color tone. Sometimes it's very aggressive and you know, sometimes if you're nice to it, it'll actually be a gentle tone, uh, which is great. So I use it on everything. I use it on vocals, snare drums, kicks, just, I mean, literally everything. I really like building my own gear. It, uh, it actually started as kind of a hobby. I was building guitar pedals, and uh, I kind of just moved on to making like mic pre's, EQs, compressors, etc. Uh, it's really cool because this way, I'm, my hands are all over it. I'm customizing not only the look but also the insides. Uh, you know, you can pick different transformers, different parts, uh, higher quality, lower quality. You know, you, you get to really have a control over what's in your gear and how it sounds. And then I also know when it, if something ever breaks, that it's my fault, not the manufacturers. How, do, how does it sound? Um, I don't know, it sounds like an 1176. You know, you can really smash it and get really distorted if you want, or you can be gentle and just, you know, take off really quick peaks from like a vocal. The cool thing is that they all sound different too. It's so like the vintage units obviously sound different than the new ones. Uh, the ones I've made sound different than the commercial ones. In my mind, you can't go wrong with more gear. Actually, uh, I have a bunch of them. I think I have eight total 1176s now. Uh, I, I like to do them in pairs. So I've got two blue stripes, uh, two black face, two uh, revision F, the silver face, that are modified with uh, Neve output transformers, and then two just regular uh, revision F ones. Uh, it's kind of cool. They all have a different tone to them, which is what I really enjoy. Uh, sometimes, you know, I want it to sound nastier, sometimes I want it to be cleaner, but, you know, I can basically use an 1176 on anything. Finding the parts is actually pretty easy. Uh, you know, with the internet, there's people that sell kits where it has just everything you need, like all the components, the circuit boards, case, just psh, all in one, uh, which is actually really cool and makes it really easy just kind of like putting together a puzzle, basically. I mean, I'd say you don't really need to know anything about electronics to get started with, uh, with building your own. Um, when I started building guitar pedals, I knew nothing of what was going on inside of them. I just knew this resistor had to go into this spot, this capacitor had to go here. It's basically just put the right component in the right place and it should work. Time-wise, you know, it takes probably anywhere between like 6 to 12 hours, kind of depending on how proficient you are with soldering, just how comfortable you are with putting things together. Troubleshooting is, that's probably the trickiest part um, of building one of these. It's something I've gotten better at the more and more I've done it, but you know, for a lot of people, especially when they're just starting off, it can, this can be the hardest part. And there's a great community out there as well of people that um, you know, are more experienced building these, that kind of know the ins and outs and what people generally mess up on. Uh, you know, so you can always, you know, you can find help anywhere now. So I like to start by stuffing up the, uh, the circuit board. I generally do it from small stuff to big stuff, so that way they kind of keeps the heights really low. So I start with like resistors, diodes, um, small capacitors, any like terminal blocks, trim resistors, and then the big capacitors. After you have the whole thing wired up, assemble it in the case, you know, check your grounding, uh, check for any noise and stuff like that, kind of start testing it out a little bit, and then you got to calibrate it. Uh, just got to make sure that it's compressing at the right at the right spot and then calibrating the VU meter so you can see what compression you're doing. You can customize them a lot. Um, you know, beyond just the cosmetic, how you finish the case, etc. Um, you know, every single component that you put in there, it was, it'll change the sound in some way. You know, some, some pieces actually make a bigger impact on your sound than others. Uh, you know, the, for instance, the type of transformer that you choose, the brand that you choose of transformer, uh, you know, that'll change your sound completely. So, uh, you know, an 1176 that I build will sound totally different from an 1176 that somebody else builds. And that's, that's kind of the cool thing that I really like about it is, you know, this is my own unique gear that has things in it that I wanted in it, and it's just, it's totally custom, you know? Yeah, the settings on 1176 are pretty straightforward. Uh, you have your input, output, attack, release, and ratio, and then your metering. Uh, so it's, like I said, it's a fixed threshold compressor limiter. So that means that the threshold always stays at the same place and you're actually just turning up and down the signal into that threshold. Um, so that changes, that threshold does change depending on what uh, ratio you have it set at. And then your output is just your makeup gain. Uh, so the input and output, uh, they work opposite of each other. So usually as I turn the input up, I'm going to be turning the output down. 
and vice versa. The attack, um, most 1176s, it's fast or faster. That's about it. Uh, and it's actually backwards from what most people would guess. So when it's on 7, that's its fastest setting, and when it's on 1, that's its slowest setting. Uh, same with the release, except the release actually has a range to it. Um, it can go from being, you know, kind of quick to being really, really slow. You can get to about a second or two sometimes. Ratios, you have 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, and 20 to 1. Uh, and of course, the secret that absolutely everybody knows is the all buttons in mode, where you press all the buttons and the meter just wigs out and just goes all the way to plus 20. And, uh, you know, you'll see it move every once in a while, but it gives you a super distorted, just really crunchy, nasty kind of compression, which, uh, you know, when you use this effect, is awesome. So here's a uh, fully finished and actually already working 1176. Uh, so as you can see, the whole circuit board's populated. We have all of our resistors, transistors, uh, capacitors, trim pots, uh, more capacitors, terminal blocks, big capacitors, uh, a couple of diodes in there. Um, yeah, this one's already all set up and working. So you can see the transformers all wired up, XLRs are wired. Uh, our whole front panel and meter switches are done. So yeah, this one's uh, this one's all good to go. All right, let's hook this up and see how it sounds. All right, so here it is. Uh, I'm pumping just a snare drum track through it right now. Uh, so I guess let's play around some of the controls. First, let's give it some more input gives me more compression, but then I need to give it a little less output as well to kind of keep my gain even. So now let's check out the attack knob. Now if I go all the way to 7, it should be really fast. Yeah, it's taking away all the transient, or as much as it can. And if I back off on that, it'll let a little bit more of the snare drum through, but still compress it. Now the release, right now it's on the fastest. As I increase that, it's going to take a lot longer to return to zero. Makes for a little bit less pumping, but that's no fun. So let's uh, let's try going nuts with the input and see what that sounds like. Of course, as I do this, I'm going to have to back off the output. So it's very distorted, very pumping. It's totally killed. <laughs> Barely recognize that it's a snare drum anymore. Now let me bring this back to be gentle. Let's go for like changing my attack, just a little gentle one two dB compression. Bring my output back up. There we go. Much more reasonable. Just adding a little bit of tone, a little bit of compression. Sounds really good. Double check my VU meter works on the plus four and plus eight settings. Yep, looks like it's all good. So, lately seen it is uh, it's all good to go and ready to be used every day. All right, so I just gave you an overview of kind of what's involved with making your own gear, and uh, hopefully it's something that interests you, and you know, start joining the community of people that make their own gear.